In the previous video, we looked at managing iSCSI based storage. In this video, we are going to look at LUN masking, both from the storage array side and from the ESXi side. So, in this video, we will take a look at LUN masking, what and why. LUN is the logical unit number, it's a throwback from uh, the old days of uh, SCSI, uh, where it basically was a logical uh, unit or a logical uh, disk that was created on a larger device. Uh, the LUN masking uh, is uh, really necessary uh, for uh, security reasons uh, as well as uh, probably just for uh, sanity in a, a production environment because you don't want all servers to be accessing all LUNs or all uh, logical disks. So we will look at configuring LUN masking on a iSCSI storage array that I have in place. LUN masking is done in a very uh, similar manner in uh, other kinds of storage arrays as well. We will also look uh, to see how LUN masking can be configured on uh, ESXi. Uh, uh, it comes in uh, handy because you don't want uh, your ESXi uh, clusters or uh, individual hosts. Uh, usually it's good practice to let all hosts in a given cluster access uh, all the LUNs. So uh, usually this would be a, a matter of uh, hosts in different clusters, basically making sure that those hosts see only the storage uh, that they uh, require. Now masking, LUN masking go, comes hand in hand with something called uh, zoning, uh, storage uh, zoning. It's almost like uh, VLANs uh, within a storage uh, network where you uh, make sure that certain uh, HBAs and uh, certain end uh, storage uh, devices are the only ones that can uh, talk to one another and anything not in that pool of uh, devices which is basically the zone cannot actually communicate. So with that uh, let's move to uh, talking a little bit about LUN masking what and why and then we will look at the storage array and then, then the ESXi. So I'm in the storage manager for my Synology uh, array. It's a uh, reasonably easy to explain uh, what LUN masking is and why one would use it. If you look at this masking section with an uh, initiator uh, IQN, what we are saying here is that any initiator, in this case it's an iSCSI initiator, in the case of uh, Fiber Channel for example it would be a worldwide name, any initiator would have access, read write access to this uh, target and the LUNs behind that uh, target except for this one specific host which is ESXi04. So in this case what I've done is I've uh, basically I'm, I'm saying that ESXi04 does not need access to the LUNs behind this target because of various reasons. For example ESXi04 may be an extremely old host. It may be at a software level for example in, in its operating system that does not support this storage array very well and could cause problems and uh, especially in a shared storage environment in a virtualized uh, data center that happens quite a bit where hosts share devices and then you don't want one host to cause problems to all the others simply because it's not up to date. So that would be one reason. Another reason could be because of uh, security. Uh, you may have a, a set of hosts uh, which uh, access a storage that it contains extremely uh, business critical uh, data. You want to be sure that no one can access that except a certain number of hosts and so you use LUN masking for that. You would also use that uh, zoning as we discussed uh, before is basically defining a set of uh, initiators and targets that can talk to one another. So obviously that would be uh, very useful in that uh, security situation as well. You could also have a situation where certain devices are brand new and uh, usually that means they uh, are very fast uh, storage devices. You could have again older hosts with uh, lower levels of software that cannot make use of that uh, high speed capability. So you want to mask off those LUNs from those hosts. You could also zone them out uh, as well. So there are many uh, ways in which you can basically eliminate host uh, being able to uh, access a LUN. And uh, that's what LUN masking basically does. So uh, to very uh, quickly look at uh, how one can uh, do the uh, LUN masking, we uh, edit this. Uh, we go into the masking tab and this is just the user interface for this uh, Synology. 
most other storage arrays uh, also do it quite simply um, i can uh, create uh, another rule where i would then uh, pick up an iqn the iqn would be uh, picked up from the initiator side so if i go to an esxi host i can pick up the initiator name uh, from there and then i can specify what kind of access uh, so for example in this case i've said we'll, we can edit this one and uh, i can say that instead of giving it no access i give it read only access or i can give it read read access in which case it becomes the same as the uh, default privileges a good uh, security measure is actually this where you look at the default privileges and then instead of making the permission read write you make it no access and then specific hosts are then given read write access to that so the default i change the default from read write access to no access and now i can very securely say okay only these hosts can actually do read write uh, to this uh, target and that is usually a, a much better way to do this uh, of course i have already esxi host talking to this so i, I will uh, cancel out of this or better i will actually explicitly specify what i'm looking for and then i hit ok and that that takes care of course it's it's going to i'll have to do a, a rescan again it looks like before uh, there we go it took a few minutes for those uh, tcp connections to be uh, connected again so if you recall these are the vm kernel uh, addresses through four uh, vm kernel adapters uh, talking to two uh, NICs on the storage array so that was interesting in its own own right we should now take a look at uh, how one can implement uh, LUN masking uh, on ESXi and that is done from the command line so we are back at 192.168.0.201 and we're going to investigate something called uh, claim rules so ESX CLI storage core claim rule list and this will list what are called claim rules so let's investigate this a little bit so you look at the at the names okay so these are the uh, plugins basically and this is of type uh, transport so what what it what it basically uh, says here is and it's it's really a little bit uh, difficult to understand here but this uh, claim rule with a rule id of zero is uh, part of the uh, native multi pathing plugin and uh, is applicable for transports that are basically usb uh, transports now the ones that are interesting in terms of LUN masking are the ones that are basically mask path so when you have a plugin with the very special name of mask underscore path all in uh, caps we can then uh, specify filters essentially which can be by vendor and can be by vendor and a certain uh, model okay so that when the ESXi host and the PSA with the NMP goes in there and looks at all the various storage that are available. It checks to see if there is a storage that has a vendor called Dell and a model called Universal Export. And if that's the case, the paths that it sees to that device are masked out. Now, there are various ways in which uh, one can actually filter. And one very common uh, one is called location. And when you say a, a location, it basically is the actual path with the uh, HBA, the channel, the target, and the LUN number that can actually be uh, specified. Another thing for uh, claim rules is that between 0 and 100 are basically uh, reserved by uh, VMware. So one should use anything more than 101. As it happens, uh, 101 is uh, uh, already uh, being used uh, for a standard purpose with Dell Universal Exports one would tend to use a higher number so let's uh, add a, a claim rule and before we add the claim rule since we're going to do it by a path let's see whether we can find some paths to find paths we need to find our SCSI devices now we're going to look at a certain category of uh, commands that we have not looked at so far we looked at the ESX CLI command set and that is the preferred way of doing it. Uh, but let's look at something which is still uh, available and has been in use for a very long time, which is the ESX CFG hyphen commands. So here we go, ESX CFG and then I double tab. And what I see here is uh, a whole bunch of commands 
including a very new command actually for, for, for NAS, which you did not look at very closely for NFS, but it's, it's worth uh, looking at. Now, uh, what we are looking at uh, here are the various uh, commands that start with basically ESX uh, CFG. And uh, the one that we are interested in is ESX uh, SCSI devs. So ESX uh, CFG SCSI devs and the dash M option will uh, give us the various data stores and the various uh, devices uh, that, that, that we have here. Once we uh, have this, we can then actually look at uh, the, the paths uh, for the various devices. And that is done with the ESX CFG dash M path command. So I'm going to pick up the canonical name from, from here by highlighting this much uh, here and then the dash cap L along with doing a specific grep for this will basically show us the various paths that are available uh, at this point in time for that uh, device and you can see uh, there are quite a few uh, this one two three four five six seven and eight active paths now we may for some reason at least for our exercise when we decide that we are going to pick up this path so it's vmhba 33 channel 7 target 1 lun 0 that's that is what we are going to actually mask on so we're going to define a claim rule we will use a number higher than 101 and we will say that we are going to define this uh, based on basically the location which means the actual path that is being used and the path we'll utilize will be vmhpa33 and we will uh, assign the plugin mask path uh, to that and then we'll go we'll reload the rules the claim rules and then you will see that that uh, path uh, basically is not available after that so well, the first step to do is to actually create that claim rule and that is done like this esx cli storage core claim rule add the rule id let's use 1001 the type is location and the address is vmhba33 the channel was 7 the target was 1 and the LUN was 0 and the plugin we want to associate has this special name of mask path which does exactly what it says it masks that path we hit the uh, enter key and that uh, uh, claim rule has actually been added except it looks like there has been a syntax error here I know what the syntax error is but uh, before we go there it's it's good to actually do the help because there are some really impressive uh, help options here and uh, some some really great uh, uh, examples of uh, how one can actually uh, do that for example you can add a rule 914 to claim all paths of the vendor string of vmware so you say dash type vendor dash vendor vmware and uh, then you have a model so that's the model name virtual and then you know you you specify the nmp plugin so this means that all vmware devices where the model number is uh, has the string virtual in it is is actually picked up by the uh, nmp uh, uh, plugin uh, some other interesting ones would be around uh, fiber channel which are based on uh, worldwide node names and uh, port names uh, so you can see the the uh, target okay is is of this type fiber channel and then the worldwide names are uh, specified there. Uh, you can also uh, claim paths to specific uh, LUNs at a given IQN. So you specify your T as a target and then you know the actual transport type is iSCSI and then you can specify it on an IQN and then you can do a specific LUN. Uh, we are doing it in our example to a specific path on iSCSI. So when I uh, retrieve that I realize that I missed the the uh, dash L that was necessary there and this should work and it actually does let's uh, 
look at ESX, uh, CLI, storage, core, claim, rule, uh, list to see whether our 1001 rule is in there and you can see that that is uh, actually in there and it is for adapter VM uh, HPA 33 channel 7 target 1 LUN 0 anytime I see uh, that path it will be uh, masked now this is not operational at this point in time because I've just added the claim rule into the system a couple of further steps actually have to be uh, taken uh, to uh, ensure that this is done so uh, I have to claim rule load claim rule has been loaded and now I list the claim rule again and you will see that another line has been added so it's not just now in the file as it was before it is now in, in, in the runtime okay and uh, basically there is a process that would uh, go uh, that, that that is done on a regular basis and uh, it would re-look at, at, at the paths and, and do uh, claims and, and that's how uh, that would actually work as you can see by re-entering the ESX config mpath l command uh, for that uh, device we see that uh, VMHBA 33C7 channel 7 target 1 L0 for which we keyed in that rule is still uh, active because there is uh, one more step uh, that basically uh, has to be done and this is a command that is a little bit long it's ESX uh, CLI uh, storage core claiming reclaim what that basically uh, does is that you know look at the new uh, set of rules or our new claim rules and then uh, reclaim a device based on those claim rules so I will do a right click to put that device ID uh, in there and uh, hit the enter key and uh, what it says is that it's unable to claim that path okay uh, because some paths may be left in an unclaimed state so we're going to create a claim rule ESX CLI storage core claim rule add dash rule 2000 that's the rule ID uh, the type is uh, location based on VM HPA 33 uh, the channel capital C is uh, 5 target is 1 and the LUN is uh, 0 and the plugin is the special mask path which would then mask that path I will then do a ESX CLI storage core claim rule list and uh, we see 2001 there along with some of the other ones that we have uh, added so we are looking at 2001 right now it's in file we need to uh, load this so we will say yes a storage core load we will then uh, run this and then uh, we will do the uh, claiming so what we need to do is ESX CLI storage core claiming reclaim and uh, we re need to reclaim that same uh, device that we had before I think I still have that no I don't uh, have that uh, up here so I need to scroll up and find my uh, device which was right here and hit the right click there so ESX CLI storage core claiming uh, reclaim so what we're doing is we're basically for that device uh, going through the uh, claim rules uh, again uh, to see you know what has changed and then uh, act accordingly so we hit the enter key and it says uh, the uh, channel 7 was unable to be uh, unclaimed and the reason is that uh, if this is already in use and then there's because there's a data store on it uh, ESXi when it goes to the last path if that's the only path available then it does not unclaim it so it, it would unclaim anything else but if that's the last path then it won't do that so it doesn't unclaim and then a reclaim so what we need to do now is to uh, look at uh, one more time at uh, ESX uh, CFG uh, dash uh, M uh, path 
dash uh, L and we are going to pipe it to grep and we are going to use that same there and we see what that uh, looks like so as you can see we have channel 0 1 2 3 4 but we don't have uh, the 5 because uh, the rule that we uh, added was for VMHPA 33 on channel 5 target 1 L0 to be masked so it doesn't even show up as inactive it doesn't even know that the path actually uh, exists so let's just take a quick look again at ESX uh, CLI storage core claim rule list and we will see that uh, the, the 2001 is the one that was applied here for channel 5 and then you can also see that the 1002 rule for channel 6 was also applied because you don't see channel 5 or 6 there and uh, the uh, channel 7 one that that existed uh, did not actually function because that would leave it as the last connected path to that device uh, from ESXi uh, on which uh, there is an existing uh, access that which is required so we'll look at one more time at ESX uh, config uh, mpad.l to verify that so we're looking to make sure that channel 6 and channel 5 are not present uh, channel 7 we get the error because we know it's, it'll be the last path and ESXi will not take down that last path so we look one more look at that uh, ESX uh, this one grab that and uh, that is certainly the case uh, 5 and 6 are just not there because they've been masked off 7 is still there so that is how claim rules are actually uh, created now again remember that the claim rule can be created based on uh, vendor type uh, model type and we saw some examples uh, when we did the help now claim rules can uh, of course uh, be removed as well and the command for that is uh, we are not going to go through that exercise right now but I will show you what that is it's just the reverse of what we did ESX CLI storage core claim rule remove let's say we remove uh, the rule 2001 and uh, when you do the list again uh, you will see that uh, you know it's been removed from the file but it's still there in in the runtime so we say basically load and run usually does a trick run and when you list it again 2001 as as, as uh, gone now of course uh, since the claim rule has changed and now channel 5 is not masked uh, one would have to basically uh, run the uh, reclaim uh, again uh, to be able to see channel 5 uh, come back uh, online so that's how uh, paths are masked and uh, it's a very important technique uh, for VMware system administrators to, to understand because this is used quite a lot and I gave you examples early on as to uh, the various uh, instances in which one would use LUN masking both on the ESXi side as well as on the uh, storage array side so with that uh, we come to the end of this uh, uh, video uh, which is about LUN masking uh, the next video is on a very uh, key tool a very interesting tool as well to understand how uh, IO uh, patterns actually work with uh, different kinds of VMs and so uh, it's called the vSCSI stats tool and I look forward to seeing you on that video